it is an optical microscope why it is an optical microscope we have already discussed in the second lecture video that uh, different type of um, types of microscopic techniques and under the optical microscope uh, the fluorescent microscope comes under this optical microscope this, this is the optical microscope because we are using uh, the light source in this fluorescent microscope or other microscope also are there uh, one other microscope confocal microscope are also uh, utilize this phenomenon of fluorescence uh, so in the next separate video lecture uh, i will discuss about the confocal microscope so it is an optical microscope we should keep in our mind it comes under the optical microscope not comes in the electron microscope because uh, here the light source is used that's why it's an optical microscope so it is an optical microscope that observe fluorescence emitted by sample by using special light source and which are the special light source these are like mercury lamp here yeah. mercury lamp xenon arc lamp laser lead super continuum source etc and uses fluorescence and fluorophore phosphorescence to generate an image so this is the definition we can define it that it is an optical microscope that observes fluorescence emitted by sample by using special light sources such as mercury lamp, genon arc lamp, laser, LED, super continuum sources, etc. And uses fluorescence and phosphorescence to generate an image. Now, after definition, we have to understand about the part of this microscopy and the structure of this microscope, image of this microscopy. So here is the structure of this microscopy. You can see here easily that um, now here, this is the part, different types of this microscopy. Uh, here you can see this, this is the light source and we should keep in our mind that we should avoid the halogen lamp because it will not produce the monochromatic illumination. That's why we should use only mercury lamp, xenon arc lamp, laser LED or super continuum sources. So light source uh, should be mercury lamp or xenon arc lamp. Uh, this mercury here, we are using the mercury lamp here. You can see in this mercury lamp, the light passes from here and it will reach to this uh, filter. After filter, this will produce only monochromatic light and monochromatic light uh, will uh, reach to this splitter beam splitter but we can say it a dichroic mirror here dichroic mirror so dichroic mirror can be called uh, beam splitter so it's, it's split the beams and uh, when it will reach to the dichroic mirror it will uh, divert it uh, through objective lens and it will reach to the sample after sample when this uh, illumination start that emission start from here and this it will reach to again the and this light will reach to the again this uh, objective lens and passes through objective lens it will reach to the dichroic mirror after dichroic mirror it will reach to the, the emission filter emission filter after that it will reach to the uh, detector so these are uh, the part part that light source first uh, main compounds of this microscopic technique that is the light source second one is the excitation filter here the excitation filter is there uh, it can be called the first optical filter first optical filter second one uh, third one is the dichroic mirror here dichroic mirror uh, or beam splitter we can say and our next one is the objective lens here objective lens and next one is emission filter here and last part of this uh, so it, mm, technique is this detector it's a detector can we detect images from here by the ccd cameras so it's a simple structure of the process uh, other parts are same as the compound microscope had only the difference in the uh, light source now we go to the light path we'll uh, see the light path of this microscopic technique in simple diagrammatic representation we can understand easily the light uh, path of this microscope see here is the light source and we should keep in our mind that halogen lamp uh, should be avoided because it will not produce the uh, monochromatic illumination so um, 
something we have to keep in our mind uh, one thing is the this light source and second one is the in this microscope technique uh, non fluorescence lights and cover silk and lenses are required for analysis of big fluorescence so we have to keep in our mind that these things should be avoided that halogen lamp and covers non fluorescence cover slip cover slip slide and lenses so we should uh, uh, always keep in our mind to avoid these things and one more thing about this microscope technique that most of the biological samples are not fluorescent uh, so uh, like uh, protein uh, amino acids and uh, pigment it can be fluorescent but not uh, many of the biological samples are seen. not fluorescent uh, some dyes are used for fluorescence uh, we will discuss later about and now you will see that light path of this microscopic technique here is a light source and uh, it's not a halogen but it's a different type of light source here we can uh, see here that this is uh, uh, either xenon arc lamp mercury vapor lamp a laser or super continuum or either it is lead so this light source produce light and this light you can see here this light is producing light different type of wavelength different type of uh, uh, wavelength are reaching to the this emission by this emission filter this first optical filter it is this is first optical filter excitation filter and after excitation filter this uh, type of uh, light only the desired light will pass through this excitation filter or monochromatic light will pass through this excitation filter and here we can see that monochromatic only all lights are uh, remain here only one type of light is pro passing through this excitation filter now after this this will reach to this a dike we have already uh, shown you in that image of um, structure of the fluorescent microscope this is beam splitter or other way we can say this is dichroic mega and it uh, split the light here we can see this monochromatic light is created here and it will reach to the uh, you can see here and this dichroic mirror and it is objective lens after passing through this objective lens it will reach to the specimen and these specimen are fluorescent labeled and when it will produce the illumination here in the specimen and emi that emitted light will reach to the objective and um, pass through this dichroic mirror and reach to the this uh, the second one emission filter and after that after that to the detector so it is a simple light path of this uh, fluorescence uh, microscope now the detector now we will see the principle in which principle it govern or what is the principle behind of this microscopic techniques so we will see that uh, a fluorescent molecule can be excited with light of one wavelength and they respond by emission at a longer wavelength this is the principle behind it that we have already seen that uh, um, different type of lights are reaching to the excitation filter but only the uh, desired light or monochromatic light reach you know, passing through this excitation filter and reach to the dichroic mirror and then after splitting it will reach to the space uh, condensed uh, means objective and then sample after sample illumination start after that this light will reach to the again from the uh, we can say that uh, objective lens and then again dichroic mirror after that uh, emission filter and then to the detector so this uh, fluorescent molecule this is the principle behind of this uh, uh, technique so we can easily say that fluorescent molecule can be excited with light of one wavelength and they respond by emission at a longer wavelength so 
fluorescent dyes are used for staining the cells so that they can be visualized in a fluorescent microscope now it is some point we have to keep in our mind that it is very sensitive for studying the intracellular distribution of molecules so it can this technique can be used for intracellular distribution to detect the molecules minute minute molecule um, in the intracellular distribution now the second one is that light from a source is directed on the space yeah, we have seen light is coming light is passing through the excitation filter then diagram mirror and then leads to the sample so light directed on a specimen containing the dyes using a filter that allow light of a particular wavelength to fall on the specimen uh, desired light is falling into the uh, objective and leads to the sample so desired light can be reached to the sample uh, or we can say that monochromatic light on monochrome who can produce monochromatic light with the gene on different type of source we have already discussed but uh, we should avoid the halogen lamp because it will not produce the monochromatic light or desired light now the emitted light is collected through another filter that one is the uh, emission filter first one is the optical first optical filter that was uh, uh, excitation filter and second one is the emission filter so the emitted light is collected through another filter and that is that is emission filter sorry now fluorescent dye are used to label the sample yeah it's very important that fluorescent dye can be used for labeling the sample and something we have to keep in our mind that uh, there are different type of dyes that can be used in different way that fluorescence it's a dye that can be excited by blue light. This dye can be excited by the blue light and then it emits green light. So we should keep in our mind that it is a type of a dye that can be excited by the blue light and emits green light. The next one is the rhodamine. Rhodamine also is another type of dye that can be excited by green yellow light and it emits red light. So rhodamine emits red light and fluorescence emits green light. So we should keep in our mind which one is the uh, which uh, dye can be produced green light so fluorescence dye can be uh, produce green light and rhodamine can be produce uh, red light so these are different type of dyes can be uh, very very important fluorescence and rhodamine now next one the light path after light path and uh, principle we should uh, see that uh, this uh, the simple diagram take representation of this uh, microscopic technique that uh, we have already seen in the uh, previous uh, slides now here as we are uh, seeing here that is a light source and light source are genome arc lamp mercury vapor lamp for laser super continuum or it's a lead etc it's a light source and uh, only the uh, reaching to the excitation filter only one type of uh, desired light or desired or monochromatic light is uh, passing through this uh, excitation filter and is to the sample or, uh, when it will reach to the sample sample can be excited and here we can see that specimen or sample is illuminated with light of a specific wavelength which is absorbed by the floor uh, floor core and here started emit light here we can see it's excited and after it it is producing or illuminated see here that sample will emit light of longer wavelength it's a shorter wavelength and is produce longer wavelength and these are passing through this this illuminated light is passing through this objective and come to the dichroic mirror and after that a emission filter and then to the detector so now you can see that this and this that filters and the dichroic are chosen to match the spectral excitation and emission characteristic of the fluorophore we used to label the specimen and now the illumination light is separated from the much weaker emitted fluorescence through the use of a spectral emission filter and then after that uh, reach to the detector and detector can detect this light or image yeah that's a simple part okay now uh, 
so you will talk about the sample preparation it's very important because the different type of microscope require a different type of sample preparation because we cannot prepare the same sample we cannot use same sample for all type of microscope we should keep in our mind that different type of microscope require different type of sample preparation here the sample must be the what condition is there for this fluorescence microscopy that sample preparation that sample must be fluorescent it must sample must be fluorescent either it can be by the protein by enzyme by dyes or by staining but sample must be fluorescent now the next one is that method of creating a fluorescent how can we create a fluorescent samples a simple methods here that uh, by the labeling of the fluorescent stain either we can uh, make our sample fluorescent by the labeling with fluorescent stain either by the protein because some biological samples uh, have different type of protein that can be fluorescent start fluorescent so we can use it and now intrinsic fluorescence of a sample like auto fluorescence can be used auto fluorescence also can be used for um, make creating a fluorescent sample and one thing about phalloidin that phalloidin is used to stain actin fibers where this is important uh, uh, fact that phalloidin is used to stain actin fibers in mammalian cells fluorophores or fluorochrome such as fluorescence alexa fluors or dialyte 488 which can be linked to a different molecule also by this way also we can make our sample person now after this uh, discussing all things we should keep in our mind that uh, this microscope have some limitation and what are these limitations that uh, fluorophores lose their ability uh, to fluoresce by photo bleaching and the uh, effect of in the effect yeah, effect, yeah, effect of the plot of photo ble bleaching uh, fluorophores lose their ability to process so this is the limitation of this microscopic techniques the next one is done the cells are susceptible to phototoxicity this also is a limitation of this microscopic technique and fluorescence molecule have a tendency to generate reactive chemical species when under illumination which enhance the phototoxic effect so these are some limitation of this microscopic techniques and uh, uh, this is all about this microscopic techniques uh, this is very pinpoint uh, um, discussion in the next lecture video we will discuss about the confocal microscopy that also depends or that also um, uh, utilize the phenomena of the same uh, fluorescence so